Our first inductee is Tracy Whetstone Cantabine. <laughs> Tracy was the first female athlete of the year at Villa Julie in 1995. A four sport athlete, she competed in field hockey, lacrosse, indoor track, and cross country for the Mustangs and was later head coach of the field hockey program in 1996. When I think of Tracy, I don't think of her as a complainer. She's always just a go-getter, and if something happens, she's looking for a way to solve it and move forward. Um, you know, she's had some, she's, I've been with her when, through ankle surgeries and knee surgeries, and they've never really held her back. She just kind of moves forward. She was never the kind of person to, um, she would probably never even call herself injured in a certain situation. It was just, you know, put a bandage on it, keep going. If, if there was um, something that wasn't working optimally, I think her, her philosophy is fix it and keep going. Um, but I don't know that she would ever consider herself injured at any point during her athletic career because that would, typically it represents somebody who sits on the sidelines and that's just not who she is. I think Tracy achieves excellence in all that she does. Um, but, and she promotes the community, any community that she's involved in, she's always, promoted. Um, just in our, like our field hockey, when we were at Baltimore Field Hockey Association, she was always involved actively in that. Um, she was always being awarded for something. Um, they just define Tracy, I think. What I find different about her is there's not a time that I've interacted with her where she hasn't immediately had a smile on her face and immediately had a positive attitude. She's extremely outgoing. Um, I, I won't call her loud, but she's not quiet. Um, and, and you just know she's a presence, and that's a fantastic thing, but you do kind of feel a certain energy that comes from her, and that's probably what speaks to other people and, and makes them want to come here when she's talking to them about Stevenson Athletics and, and the pride that she has for the school. Um, I, I think she just sort of exudes a certain energy that is contagious and makes other people want to be part of that. Um, so I can really see where that where she's been successful in that role. Um, but she, she definitely has something about her that is happy, inspiring, outgoing, and it doesn't make you just want to be part of that, it sort of makes you want to emulate that as well. From the class of 1995, it is my honor to welcome Tracy Cantabine into the Dick Watts Athletics Hall of Fame. I'm getting old. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for this honor. Being a team sport, I've always been on the field with novice to international players that have contributed to the player that I was, although I still think I can be. Um, who knew that when I picked up a stick in ninth grade, it would lead me on a path to a, multiple, a multitude of great people and experiences. Thank you to all my teammates and coaches. When I arrived at VJC, I was already coaching hockey and playing club, but as many of you know, this is a special place. I met some other athletes and contributing to the birth of an athletic program seemed exciting. And boy, did we have excitement. With only one field, we were often dodging soccer, bar, soccer balls, large rocks, divots, and other athletes. But the close quarters forged a special bond between the athletes, especially when doing our part to meet the NCAA required number of teams to be considered D3. Playing a soccer scrimmage? Okay. Run cross country? Sure. Participate in indoor track? Oh, pick me. 
Carol Zimmerman still haunts me with knowing my time in the 50 yard dash, selected because it was the least amount of running. I remember sitting in the Towson Field House to conserve energy and watching the other schools run laps to warm up. And who could forget Trey running cross country in work boots? We weren't the most orthodox running bunch. For many games, we played short. Walking to our bench at Wesley College, the other team remarked, their other man must be lost. <laughs> Playing with one less players, we beat them 2-0, and I received my first set of stitches for the season. That was in the video there. The second set, but not the last, happened in practice from a stick to my ear. With never a frown on her face or the ability to hurt a fly, Teresa Clark was distraught and full of tears for splitting my ear. I had to remind her that it was my ear and everything was going to be okay. And yes, I received stitches again in a postseason regional tournament. But not to worry, we had Kit, our wonderful trainer, comedian, friend, and van driver, if you are lucky enough to have a large team. Our training room, which could only fit three people, consisted of half of a table, a few folding chairs, and a stack of buckets. Ah, the dreaded bucket. If you had an ankle injury, you'd grab a bucket, fill it with ice and water, and soak for 20 minutes. I think t Kit took great pleasure in kicking the bucket, which would somehow drop the temperature 10 degrees. Did I say it was special here? The training room wasn't the only place where fond memories were made. Van rides were also comical because someti sometimes at the expense of our coach, Anna Banana. Growing up in Hereford, Anna was able to identify the different types of cows as, we, as we'd pass on road trips. Who knew that like cats, there was more than one? <laughs> for myself and for many of my athletic peers, we transferred to Villa Julie because of the friendly feel-at-home environment, which included the likes of Chip Rouse, Chris Noya, Steve Angorn, and Mark Hergen, all steadfast supporters of us on the field and in the classroom. Rarely missing a game, they were easy to spot, partly because we didn't have a lot of spectators or bleachers. It was the likes of their support on and off the field that has never changed at this institution. In the early days, we played purely for the love of the sport. There were no conference titles, ECA bids, or NCAA bursts to be had. There were no team rooms, night practices or games, multiple facilities, or full-time coaches. Our hockey uniform was a t-shirt, and we supplied our own equipment. Yet we knew we were laying the foundation for something great. Maybe not that day or that season, but we knew, Stevenson, we knew VJC, now Stevenson, was and is a special place. Thank you to Brett and Miss Fran, where's Brett? Sorry, Miss Fran, Brett, wherever you are, uh, for being the athletic department in the early days and to Dr. Manning for taking our dream and turning it into a reality. And to my fellow athletes from back in the day, thank you for the laughs and good memories. Anytime the Garth Brooks song, I Got Friends in Low Places, plays, I can't help but think of the spring formal. Thank you to my family and friends, who I consider my friend, my family, for humbling me by sharing in this special honor and for your love and support. And to my greatest accomplishments, Lillian and Curry, find your special place, go out and do amazing things. Lillian is the starter on the eighth, ninth grade field hockey team and is only in seventh grade. Curry picks up a hockey stick with us on Friday nights and has a wicked drive. Watch out. Thank goodness neither one has my speed or lack of speed. And to my rock, best friend, and internal teammate, Paul. I can't imagine going through the game of life with anyone else. Thank you again for this honor. Go Mustangs. <laughs>